for the judge to take the bench. We have invited a very special guest on the set with us this hour. Someone that has lots of experience making movies. He is a prop master and an armor with 28 years of experience in the business. He's been the president of the IATSE Union in Los Angeles. Mr. Dutch Merrick is with us. It is great to see you in person. Welcome to Court TV headquarters. Good morning. Thank you. I'm so great. I happen to be in, uh, in Atlanta, so yes. it worked out really well. And I have to clarify, I wasn't the president of the IATSC. I was a one local Local, local 44, and we okay. represent all the prop masters in Hollywood. Gotcha. Okay, you're just a member of IATSE, and yes. then president. Okay, I got you. It was still impressive, Dutch. Still, it's impressive <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's I knew you had done some some union work, and uh, you're someone so familiar with the business, and you got into it being a competitive shooter. Right, right. Right. Well, when I was a kid, I was not very good at baseball, basketball, or football. My dad was an LA County Sheriff's deputy. And my stepfather was into gun collecting and reloading. So I grew up around guns. And by the time I think I was 15, I was a competitive shooter in a practical pistol competition. So it's speed shooting through a course. Um, and that's and that was my segue into the film business was wow. wrangling guns on a, on a low budget non-union film and uh, they needed someone that understood firearms and I didn't know anything about film at the time uh -huh. so it was uh, an adventure learning that learning the ropes back in 1996 oh Dutch, wow how fortunate that you I mean you took your firearms expertise and then translated it to the film sets it worked out well. I, my job at the time was as a limousine driver in the inter entertainment business. Yeah. And that afforded me the opportunity to be on a lot of film sets. And while I was on the film sets, I witnessed this sort of synergy and a harmony with which the crew work, and they were artisans. And I said, I want to be part of that. And so I reached out to friends, and I knew someone that worked in the business, was a script supervisor. I said, uh, you know, hey, I want to get in the business too. She says, well, what's your craft? What do you do? And I said, what do you mean craft? I didn't mm -hmm. even know what it meant. Sure. I said, well, I saw a guy handle guns on a film set I, I think I can do that because I was very qualified with right. firearms so six months later she's on a tiny little show and they had a prop master that had a bunch of guns in the script but he was deathly afraid of guns oh. and uh, they said why don't you come interview and I interviewed I got the job and that was my first film and I remember my first call time January 6 1996 at 6 a.m. and that was my first day and I thought well this might turn into something and here I am almost 30 years later and now I teach a course in prop gun safety. Let's get, it's gone full full course over the wow. last few decades. Uh, Dutch, well, congratulations on quite an illustrious career. It's not over yet. You're, you're just getting started. <laughs> and we'll talk more about the safety course. You have a book out. We'll get into that. Uh, but first, I want to get your initial impressions of what we're seeing in this case. So translating your expertise to the Rust movie, Fatal Shooting, and the trial in particular of Hannah Gutierrez. We have a couple clips I want to play for you now. This is from the Dolly grip operator uh, who took the stand a very compelling witness uh, a guy who's had a lot of years of film experience and here he's talking about um, a couple things regarding Hannah Gutierrez um, her unprofessionalism that he noticed and then not loading the firearm in front of the actors and other crew members on the set let's watch In my experience, the the armors are usually the uh, well, for lack of a better description, the most um, uptight and anal retentive people on set because they literally have people's lives in their hands. Did you notice a, a difference then, generally, in terms of just the um, behavior, the general behavior on the movie set of the other armors you worked with? as compared to Ms. Gutierrez? Uh, yes. What was that? Um, she wasn't necessarily as uh, serious or professional as I'm accustomed to with the other armors that I've worked with. So the gun is generally, in your previous experience, loaded with either the dummies or the blanks right there in front of cast and crew? Correct. Um, is that a practice that Ms. Gutierrez followed? Uh, I, I, not to my recollection. Do you recall ever watching her uh, or taking note of her loading the gun in the presence of caster crew? I think there were a couple of times on set where we were doing these quick resets instead of cutting the camera where she was put in a position to reload that as quickly as she could and hand it back to our actors. 
Hey, Dutch, do you see anything wrong with that, her not loading the firearm in front of others? Well, I guess let me preface this whole thing by saying I've watched this case very, cl very closely for mm -hmm. two years, and it's become a big part of what I teach. And so I paid close attention. And now that we're in the trial, a lot more things are being revealed than I had ever read in anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, my heart goes out to all the crew. Right. The day of that tragedy, I was crying like a baby. I think every every prop person, every armor was crying. Um, and so every person on that set, now that I start to see the faces in the trial, I go, those are our coworkers. You know, we step on a film set anywhere in the world and we go, these are our people. And we, sure. we know our, 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 our tribe. Anyway, so what he's describing is uh, we, we have a process by which we will load a gun generally in front of the first AD, who can be a second set of eyes for us. They're the chief safety officer on set, if you will. So we are supposed to always invite them to observe that process with their eyes and, of course, not their hands, per se. Um, but there are times when there's a lot of guns and a big action scene and you have a bunch of stuff and they can't necessarily get eyes on everything. But it is generally always the case where we will load it in front of the AD and very often in front of the actor. Um, and then we hand it to the actor prepared for the scene. So whatever that scene calls for, that script, maybe the gun is partially loaded. It's got two rounds left or something that's relevant to the script. And we'll make sure that it, it matches whatever the script needs. So the actor's not worrying about that. But we'll take care of that continuity issue every time. But we will present it in front of the actor. They can see us load it. Here's your firearm. It's hot. Let's ready to go. Mm, that makes perfect sense. Uh, Dutch, I want to play another clip for you from the Dolly Grip operator. And here he's talking about the prop cart that Hannah Gutierrez used. I know you've seen the pictures of it that have yeah. come into evidence, as have I. I've been saying it looks to me like it was ransacked in a burglary. It was so messy. Let's watch. I recall walking by her uh, cart a number of times and firearms and or uh, bandoliers or ammo belts being left out on the cart uh, unsecured. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen an armor pull loose ammo out of a fanny pack. Typically, my experience with armors is um, any ammo they use Blanks or dummies comes out of some sort of container, whether it's a labeled box or um, some other plastic type ammo container, so. Was that a safety concern for you? Yes. Why? Uh, it seemed inappropriate and out of the ordinary um, that those firearms weren't secured. Let's look at the prop cart here again. Uh, in Dutch, you are a prop master and an armorer. That's right. Have you ever seen a cart looking the way this one did? And if we could pull it up for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, take a look. Well, so what came out in testimony the other day is that apparently um, Hannah Gutierrez Reed only got this prop cart several days into the show. And from before that, she may have been working out of a little collapsible trolley. Um, having seen the photographs of the prop truck, mm -hmm. the truck prop truck was a shambles, and that tells me just sort of how they were organizing their truck. There wasn't even shelves. Um, and always, 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 when we have a cube truck or a five-ton truck on a on a show for a department, we'll shelve it out so that everything can be organized. And one of the keys to success as a prop master is keeping things thoroughly organized because if something plays on a Monday and it plays again on a Thursday, you've got to find it again. Right. So we have to be meticulous. Everything looked like it was thrown into the truck. Now the prop cart itself, the first thing I thought was, well, this is a crime scene. There was probably mayhem in the first moments. So I kind of withheld judgment about the prop cart until I saw later evidence photos of the prop truck. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to be a shambles and not well organized. Um, and then what really alarmed me was the testimony that Sarah Zachary, the prop master, had called Seth Kenny, the ammo and gun provider, texted him emergency, then she's on a phone call, then she rushes back to the set, she takes rounds out of guns and throws them away, and she takes things off the prop cart and to the prop truck. We don't know yet what those items were, so I don't know if things were being hidden on the prop cart. There was a sworn statement from uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed that Sarah Zachary had said something about a half a box of bad ones. Mm. So meaning maybe if a box is 50, maybe more than 25 live rounds. But by the time the investigators have gotten there, days later, days later, um, 
there were six that they found total. So I, I guess it, to me it's raised that question, was there more rounds and they've been hidden now that I know that Sarah Zachary moved things around? Right. Was there six? Even if there's one live round on a set, for God's sakes, that's unheard of in, in filmmaking. Like we just don't allow live ammunition on a film set. Right, Dutch. Mind-bogglingly It bad. really is. I, I, everything you're saying here is so helpful to really dig in. I want to dig in more with you. Sure. We just have to hit a break, but you mentioned the name Seth Kenny, the guy yes. who supplied the ammunition, not charged. Sarah Zachary, this woman who was kind of overseeing Hannah Gutierrez yep, and her work master. with the props. And so she apparently gets on the phone with him before police are even there and might have tampered with evidence. Uh, this is big stuff. Uh, Dutch, more questions uh, for you in just a moment. Uh, I want to let everyone know that while the judge is not on the bench, the defendant is in the courtroom. Hannah Gutierrez just walked in. There she is. Uh, walking in with her attorneys, getting ready for what will be day number six of this trial. She walks in. Let's remember, she's cloaked in the presumption of innocence. Her attorneys placing the blame on the film's actor and producer, Alec Baldwin. They're also pointing the finger at the guy that Dutch just mentioned, Seth Kenny, the guy that supplied the rounds that she was working with. We'll talk about it more after the break. Famous actor in a movie set accident that ended in tragedy.